Good morning. Good morning. Am I on? I can't tell. I can't see. Anyway. All right. So welcome to worship on Pentecost Sunday. Thank you for wearing your red. Excellent. Red, of course, is the color that represents the Holy Spirit and the fire that he brings to all of us in faith. Um, that is why we use this color on this day. Um, so let's uh, get the sad news out of the way. On our prayer list, um, I think just last week we added uh, Carolyn Killian's friend Tammy Saunders. Tammy, uh, I'm told, passed away yesterday. So let's please keep uh, all of her friends and family in our prayers. Um, okay. Uh, Donuts for Dad is in two weeks, so we will have that in the parish hall instead of um, any Sunday school meeting that might still be happening. Um, I hope you saw in the Miller's mic, we're pretty much not going to have children's Sunday school uh, through the summer, at least through June and July. Um, confirmation class, we're working out our own schedule, so we're going to be off for the next few weeks anyway. I think the adults are still meeting as you finish up The Chosen, is that right? Just one more, one more episode? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, but on the 19th, let's all go to the parish hall and wish all the dads on, and men in our church family a happy Father's Day. Um, as for this week, uh, I think we got it right in the bulletin, but I don't think it's correct in the Miller's mic. Lydia Circle is not meeting this week. They'll meet next week. Um, and this Friday will be our monthly dinner fellowship uh, at Harbor Inn. Please contact Alice by Thursday so she can let the restaurant know how many seats we need. Uh, let's see. Any announcements, Mandy? Okay. Any other announcements I've missed? Okay. In that case, because it's the first Sunday of the month, raise your hand if you have a wedding anniversary this month. Uh, Miss Ann, Tony and Lori, excellent. Well, happy anniversary. <laughs> raise your hand if you have a birthday this month. Yeah. Oh, Jansen, Don. Oh, yeah. Is that your bad arm, Don? That's why your hand wasn't going up. Lynn, oh, Miss Linda. Okay. Lynn, would you uh, lead us in the song, please? Oh, Wayne's got it. Okay. Happy birthday. I guess I, it's about time, yeah. I hope you all have a blessed birthday this month. At some point, I'll figure out what we're supposed to put in that, that one line there for that song. I haven't quite figured it out yet. Hmm? Yeah. Okay, we can do that too. All right, uh, if there are no other announcements, please take a moment and prepare your hearts and minds for worship. We begin with a brief order for confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our, our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Please take a moment to reflect on your own specific sins, and together we can lay them at the foot of the cross. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, Renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our entrance hymn is number 161, O Day Full of Grace.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things. <coughs> Receive holy comfort. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the 11th chapter of Genesis. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. 
And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down there and, there and confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because the, there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. The word of the Lord. Amen. Now read Psalm 143 responsively by whole verse. Lord, hear my prayer, and in your faithfulness heed my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. For my enemy has sought my life. He has crushed me to the ground. He has made me live in dark places like those who are long dead. I remember the time past. I muse upon all your deeds. I consider the works of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul gasps to you like a thirsty O oh Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Do not hide your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord, for I flee to you for refuge. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake, for your righteousness' sake. Bring me out of trouble. second reading is from the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes, and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what did this mean? But others, mocking, said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this was what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, 
before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the words that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it takes place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me. But I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. The the Gospel of the Lord. Hi, Mason. Is, Is Lila coming too? How are you, buddy? Good. Give me five. Hey, Lila. Jackson. Jansen, how are you? Oh, my goodness. Hayden, are you walking already? Oh, my gosh. Good morning. So, did you hear why we're wearing red today? Anybody hear why we're wearing Why are we wearing red today, Jansen? Do you know? You don't know? Well, I mean, a lot of people are, right? I mean, you can see all the red out there. We only do this really on very special occasions in the church. <clears throat> and today is one of the biggest days that we do it. Um, let's see. So, Lila, what's in the middle of the, of the red thing on the altar? What's that a picture of? See that bowl? What's in the bowl? Fire. Fire, right. Is fire kind of red? That's one of the colors of fire, right? Well, we think of the Holy Spirit as flame, right? When God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, the bush was on fire, but it didn't burn up the bush. The only way that could happen is with God's power, right? Because if we put something on fire, it burns up. Did you know that, let's see, I think everybody here has the Holy Spirit in them. Did you know you have the Holy Spirit in you, Jansen? Did you? Okay. (laughs) Lila, did you know you have the Holy Spirit in you? You do. Did you know that, Mason? Yeah? I was there. I was there when you got the Holy Spirit, Mason. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah? (laughs) Hayden has the Holy Spirit. When do we get the Holy Spirit? When, do, when does the Holy Spirit come into us? Do you know? Yeah. When? Um. <laughs> In baptism. When you were baptized, and I, I wasn't there for yours, but I was there for Hayden's. I was there for Mason's. I wasn't there for Lila's, but I'm pretty sure we all do it the same way. We, we, we use water, right? Put water on your head three times and say, 
I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. All right? You were, you were much littler than you are now, Mason. I bet you don't remember it. But, and then when that's done, then what did I do? If you, do, you remember, do you remember when I did Hayden's? Oh, there he is. I, I took my thumb. Can I touch your forehead, Mason? Okay. I took my thumb and I made the sign of the cross, right? And I said, and for you, I said, Mason, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever, right? Baptism is when God gives us his Holy Spirit. Do we need the Holy Spirit? Yeah. Did you hear how Jesus described the Holy Spirit? He called him the helper, right? The Spirit comes to help us. The Spirit comes to, um, to help our faith, to help us to lean on God when we're having hard times, to help us feel a connection to God. You know, the best, the best way to help that along and, and give it a little boost if you're, if you're not feeling the Spirit, do you know how to do that? Read the Bible. Or even better, come get, come get communion, right? The Holy Spirit is how God has kept his promise to always be with us. He is always with us. And this day that we celebrated is when God gave his spirit to a whole crowd of people all at one time. And it was an amazing scene. Miss Mandy just read about everything that happened when, when he did that. So God sends his Holy Spirit to us to help us. And that's what we think about when we think about the spirit, that he's our helper. When we're having a hard day, when we just don't understand why things are, are happening the way they are, we can say, you know, God, I need your Holy Spirit right now. Will you please, please let the helper help me? And that's a good prayer to pray, okay? So that's what I want you to think about when you see red in church and when, um, when we talk about Pentecost, that's what Pentecost was when God gave, us, when gave a bunch of people the Holy Spirit, okay? But you have the Spirit, Why? Because of baptism. You were baptized into that same family. Okay? All right, let's, how about we pray? Would you make prayer hands and pray with me, please? <clears throat> Good and gracious God, thank you that you have promised to always be with us and that you do that by giving us your Holy Spirit, watching over us, letting, letting your Spirit help us and work in us. We would ask that your spirit would guide us this week, that it would help, that everything that we do this week would be guided by him, and that as your spirit guides us, that we would grow closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, I have a little gift for you today. We have some very talented people in our church who do some yarning, and they have made a little present for each one of you. So. I am just going to hand these out. These are little, what does that look like? It's like, a, it's like a caterpillar, right? See his eyes on there? And then it looks like yeah. yeah. Ooh, Lila, I have a pink one. Would you rather have a pink one? Okay, trade me. There you go. There's one for you. One for you, Jansen. And can he have one? How about I give it to Mom, and you decide when he can have it. All right. Thank you for coming to see me this morning. You can go back to your seats. <clears throat> you like one, Ross? I can't believe he's walking. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So today is the day that we celebrate what our tradition tells us is the birthday of the Church of Christ. And that happened because God gave his Holy Spirit to that crowd. That is normally what our focus is today, but on this Pentecost, I want to take a step back and look at the Old Testament story, the beginning of this the Tower of Babel. <clears throat> Martin Luther himself tells us that for some time after the flood, the entire earth was in a blessed state. For all people had one language. 
no small bond for maintaining harmony. One language is a particular asset for maintaining the teaching of religion. The fresh memory of the immeasurable wrath of God in the flood kept their hearts in the fear of God and in reverence for their ancestors. However, Noah's son Ham is the first to disturb this blessed state. As though he had forgotten the great wrath, he first despises the authority of his father and makes a mockery of him who he ought to have respected, as we have previously heard. Ham then leaves his father Noah and his godly brothers and sets up a new kingdom for himself on earth. As I proceed this morning, I want you to pay attention to how many times you hear me say self or selves. You see, Ham's descendants eventually came to tyrannical power in that kingdom he set up for himself. And as they enjoyed that power, they set out to persecute their cousins, the godly descendants of Noah, particularly Shem's children. And they did this in a variety of ways. And their new powerful kingdom grew. From Ham, just as from an ungodly and wicked source, the false and lying church takes its origin. And in this story, Moses, who wrote it down, unfolds this story about the beginnings of the pestilence that rages against the true church. All right, we've seen this story in the past, right? We've read this before. It's fairly obvious that the sin of the builders here is their pride, their arrogance. You can see it easily in verse 4. Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower. These words are evidence of smug hearts, which put their trust in the things of this world without trusting God. Luther says that this sin was nothing else than extraordinary smugness and pride linked together with contempt for God. These ungodly are used to behaving this way. When they are puffed up by success, they suppose that they are sitting on God's lap. (laughs) And in their great self-reliance, they have the audacity to do anything they please. This is written 500 years ago. Seems pretty familiar, doesn't it? That is exactly what these people have done, doing whatever they please. They drove out their God-fearing cousins. They rejected both God's law and his promise, choosing to worship themselves rather than the God who saved them from the flood, who spared them. And at this point now, they have sinned against both God and neighbor. And it's all motivated by their own pride. Pride. Hmm. They are building this tower for themselves alone. Again, Luther says the emphasis lies in their saying, let us build ourselves a city and a tower. Not for God, not for the church of God, actually to suppress the church. And on the words, let us make a name for ourselves. That shows their motivation. They certainly don't care about God's name at this point, and they don't recognize God's authority in their lives. In this passage, Moses points out the sin that we call apostasy, namely that the descendants of Ham and others separated from God and his word, separated themselves from their fathers and the true church, not only so far as their outward association was concerned, but as to their religion and their very worship. They lived in accordance with their own devices and desires. In other words, they wanted to be their own authority. They don't want to submit to anyone, certainly not Yahweh. This story portrays the ungodliness, the schemes, the ambition, the plots of all ungodly people, especially 
the hypocrites, who alone appear to themselves to be holy and very close to God, and who want to rule the earth. If you want to call this sin by another name, it is truly blasphemy of the name of God and even a violation of the Sabbath. It is rank idolatry by which the glory of the living God is changed into an idol of the heart. Wow, an idol of the heart. Again, does any of this sound familiar yet? It just doesn't seem to me like this was written 500 years ago. The false church is always the persecutor of the true church, not just spiritually, but by means of false doctrine and ungodly forms of worship. Also physically, though, by the sword, tyranny. Over the last few months, I think you've heard me mention at least once or twice that the largest group, the largest religious group in our country is something we have come to title the nuns, right, N-O-N-E. When you ask them, what's your religious preference, they say none of the above. For over 20 years, this has been the largest growing faith group in the United States. I'm sorry, but no matter how hard you try, a human being is going to worship something or someone. We are religious people. It is in our nature. We were created that way. And when you kick God out of your life, that vacancy will be filled by something or someone else because nature abhors a vacuum. So what are these nuns putting in its place? Well, look around. Is it not obvious? based on the downward spiral our society seems to be in the moment. My personal opinion is that politics is the new religion of this country. And it's really just Babel 2.0, isn't it? Many of these people believe that they don't need a 2,000-year-old book with old-fashioned and out-of-date rules to tell them how to live their lives. You ever heard somebody make that statement? What a narrow and spiritless view of this faith that we have. <clears throat> to make such a statement implies not just ignorance of what the Bible says, but a downright refusal to even want to hear what Christ might offer them. These people have elevated themselves to the throne of their own hearts, and that is a seat that was always intended for God. And although they might be sitting there, Satan doesn't have to be in the chair to be pulling the strings. He merely needs to whisper in that monarch's ear as their trusted advisor. Look what he gets from that foolish throne occupant. Some people in our country are pushing for laws to allow a mother to kill her baby after the baby has been born and somehow call it legal. Recreational marijuana has been legal in several states for a few years now. And the next stage is now starting. Have you heard this yet? Oregon has now decriminalized harder drugs. And just in the few months since they took that action, overdoses have risen 700%. After the Berlin Wall fell in 1989, I can't recall, even in the military, talking about nuclear war for years until just the last two months. There are people in our own country now who are talking about tensions between our fellow citizens, and they're using phrases that range from national divorce. Have you heard that? We should have a national divorce. There are others who are talking about we could be looking at a new civil war. Our political parties are no longer just disagreeing with each other. Constituents on both sides, both sides, are acting out violently against opposing political representatives. Remember the, the shooting at the congressional softball game a year or two ago? Some are just assaulting other citizens who vote differently because they don't like the sticker on the back of their car pulling them out of their vehicle and beating them to a pulp just because of a sticker or a baseball cap. 
Violence and rage are unquestionably rising at alarming rates. You will never convince me that all this awfulness and chaos that seems to be growing by leaps and bounds is not related to the drastic rise in godless people in our society. It is not a coincidence. We have built our own Tower of Babel. And I hate to say this, but I'm afraid it looks like our nation's capital. As Moses described all the sins surrounding that first sinful structure, he tells us that God then sent a punishment, the confusion of languages. This may appear to have been a light punishment, but surely it is a terrible one if you take into consideration the extreme hardships that resulted from the confusion of languages. For one thing, identity of language is a very strong bond in human association and harmony among people. Where languages differ, we can't really conduct commerce. Often hatred arises in the heart against that nation whose language you don't understand. It's clear that as a result of this division of languages, hearts were disunited, customs were changed, dispositions and endeavors were altered. Do you know the reason that there are three Lutheran churches right here and not one? Do you all know our history? One of the primary causes of the disagreement, not the only one, one of the primary causes of our division was some of the folks in our one congregation wanted to continue to worship in German. Others wanted to move to English because this church had started attracting more than just German parishioners. There were Swedes, there were Finns and Norwegians, and oh, by the way, there were people who were just born in this new country that didn't speak German. They could not agree, and so they split. That was the first division that eventually led to a, another division causing these three churches to be separate right here on this corner. This is in our very history. Language caused division. Thankfully, God has always been intending to set this right. He always had a plan. We see that plan come to fruition in Acts chapter 2, that day of Pentecost with the gift of the Holy Spirit. There is still division and confusion of different languages, but that confusion is overcome in the power of the Holy Spirit. Again from Martin Luther, therefore, it is a great blessing and an outstanding miracle of the New Testament that by means of various languages, the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost brought men of all nations into the one body, the one body of the one head who is Christ. Christ joins and unites all into one faith through the gospel, even though the different languages remain. And he tears down the wall, not only by reconciling us to God through his death and speaking to us in a new language, but also by bringing about outward harmony so that different flocks are brought together under the one shepherd and are gathered into one fold. This is Christ's blessing. What Christ did for us, what he continues to do for us, what we have been over the top celebrating with our liturgy over the last seven weeks with a different hymn of praise and the longer Eucharistic prayer and all the other changes to our liturgy that we only do during these seven weeks. We do them to magnify the celebration of Christ's resurrection and how important that event was. Everything that he accomplished for us, reconciling us to the Father, that reconciliation the Father has always wanted. His atoning sacrifice served to overcome the differences between us and God, yes, but also between us and our neighbor. Each time we partake of the Lord's Supper, we start our service with what? Confessing our sins, 
those things that we have to ask God to forgive us so that we can be reconciled to him. So that reconciliation begins our morning. Then, just before we come to the altar to receive that sacrament, we exchange the peace of Christ with those around us. That is reconciliation with neighbor. We are supposed to put aside our differences and bury the hatchet and forgive each other. When you say, the peace of the Lord be with you, that's what that means. I want to be reconciled to you. I want to put aside any old grudges that we've been holding. I want to be reconciled to you. That's what that means when you say that. And when you in return receiving that greeting say, and also with you, or peace be with you too. Whatever it is you say, you are receiving that peace. You are acknowledging that desire to put away those differences and to reconcile. Why? So that when we come to the altar, we are one in Christ. That we have followed his command for us to reconcile. When we receive the body and blood of Christ, then we are reminded that we are the body of Christ, united in him. We are his church. Okay, we might still have different languages, but we're united in Christ. When I went to Israel in 2015, we visited a few different churches, all Christian. None of them, though, conducted their worship in English. One service was conducted entirely in Arabic. Now, thankfully, the priest recognized our little American group, and so he gave us an abbreviated version of his sermon in English. But all of the rest of the liturgy, all of the worship, was in a language that none of us had any training in. But I'll tell you, when we came to the Lord's Prayer, as the locals were praying it in Arabic, we chimed up and prayed it in English. We prayed it with them. They knew exactly what we were doing, and we knew exactly what they were doing. People turned around and looked at us and smiled, and we smiled at them. It was a powerful and uniting moment that I won't ever forget. Yes, we prayed in different languages, but the love of God in Christ speaks to all people in their own language, just as Mandy read to us from Acts chapter 2. As with all the punishments in the Bible, God's point was not merely to stop people from committing this act. Yes, that was part of it. He wanted to stop them from building a tower that would reach the heaven, sure. But his real point was to get people to realize that they could not achieve the greatness that they're capable of without turning to him, without relying on him. They were trying to rely only on themselves. It could be that they just wanted to prove that they didn't need God. They failed miserably. I'd say there's a good bet of that very same sentiment going around these days too. A lot of people trying to prove that they don't need God. But we do. We do need God. Pretty confident everybody in here knows that. But there's a lot of people out there who don't. So with all the chaos around us, we in the body of Christ have a responsibility to our neighbor. Specifically that neighbor who doesn't know Christ. We are called to shine his light on them. How do we do that is a question that we're going to explore over the months ahead. We did a little of it yesterday with our drive through prayer. I think we had 13 cars that came up and I know some of them really needed to hear the word of the gospel, really. I think all of us just need to look for the opportunities that God puts in front of us <clears throat> and then follow God's call for us in those moments. One heart at a time, one heart at a time, we can share the peace that Christ has given us. I am convinced that his peace is the perfect antidote to the chaos in the world around us. One heart at a time is exactly how our little church can make a difference 
in our neighborhood, in our city, in this part of our world. I pray we can find that one heart and in that moment, share the word of God boldly with that person who needs it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to stand as you are able. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. He was sick, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to God our Father in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord, making intercession for the church, the world, and for all people according to their need. Gracious Lord, your Spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all Christ Jesus has spoken. Comfort us with divine peace. And do not let our hearts be troubled or afraid. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as you once chose apostles to proclaim the resurrection, 
So open the mouths of your pastors and people to declare his praises to all who will hear. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, sustain those who are mocked for believing and confessing the truth of your word, that they may remain faithful to you. Lord, in your mercy. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have poured out your spirit upon us, that we might believe your truth and raise our sons and daughters in it. Bless all parents, that they may faithfully catechize their children in your word. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of might, preserve your people from their enemies, bring peace to the nations, and prosper uh, the cause of life. Bless our leaders, especially our president, our governor, our congress, our legislature, and all judges and magistrates. Give them a relentless pursuit of just laws for the common good of all with a heart of mercy for the weak and vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of compassion, do not forget the sick and the suffering. Grant them healing according to your will. Today we pray especially for everyone on our prayer list, those we name now in our hearts, and those known only to you. Give them confidence that you know their need and will faithfully supply them with all that they need to endure to the day of your coming. When all affliction will end and you will grant the perfect consummation to us and to all who have loved your appearing. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, be with our brothers and sisters at St. Stephen's, Christ United, St. James, and Mount Calvary Lutheran Churches as they discern the call for a new pastor. Assure them of your Holy Spirit's presence in and through the call process and lead us to be good neighbors to them during their transition. Bless their interim pastors as they lead them through this season of change. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of grace, your Son has come among us and given us the privilege of a place at his table. Prepare us to receive his body and blood with repentance and faith for our good and for the flowering in our lives of your holiness and righteousness. Nourish and feed us that in this holy communion we may be strengthened for your service. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune and defend us against every error that we may continue steadfast in the faith, increase in love and good works, and trusting firmly in your grace for us by his death, obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with your neighbor. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death, and on this day, as he had promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this the whole earth exalts in boundless joy, and so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending You are indeed holy, O God, the fountain of all holiness. You bring light from darkness, life from death, speech from silence. We worship you for our lives and for the world you give us. We thank you for the new world to come and for the love that will rule all in all. We praise you for the grace shown to Israel, your chosen, the people of your promise, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the memory of the fathers the homecoming from exile, and the prophet's words that will not be in vain. In all this, we bless you for your only begotten Son who fulfilled and will fulfill all your promises. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the incarnation of your Son, his human birth and the covenant he made with us. We remember the sacrifice of his life, his eating with outcasts and sinners, and his acceptance of death. But chiefly we remember his rising from the tomb, his ascension to the seat of power, and his sending of the holy and life-giving spirit. We cry out for the resurrection of our lives when Christ will come again in beauty and power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit that we and all who share in this bread and cup may be united in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, may enter the fullness of the kingdom of heaven, and may receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him.
Gathered together by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The meal is ready.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your Son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of the godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Our closing hymn is number 370, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Disciples, rise, let us go from here. Thanks be to God.